I'm Rena Keen, board member at the Niles SNA Silent Film Museum. You just saw a very important film to us here in Niles. That is The Movies Go West, made in 1974. Hal Angus lends major street cred to this film because he was there back in the day. Being one of the SNA Cowboys and marrying Josephine Rector, the key person who approved all the scripts and scenarios for the first three years of the one and two reelers that were made there between 1912 and 1916, he could have a first-hand account of such things. Jeffrey Bell says in his book, The Golden Gate and the Silver Screen, after retiring from the U.S. Coast Guard, he studied film at San Francisco State, my alma mater as well. He produced and directed several other films, including Point Reyes, Maya, The Movies Go West, The First Motion Picture Show, Those Daring Young Filmmakers by the Golden Gate, My Jack London, A Daughter Remembers, Bret Hart, Chronicler of the West. He wrote articles for the American Film Institute Report, San Francisco Magazine, American Classic Screen Magazine, and California History. We're trying to track down his films to make them more available and get his works listed on IMDb. His papers are located at the Bancroft Library at UC Berkeley. We're interested in doing this because his work was among the first to really do an in-depth look of filmmaking here in the Bay Area. He uncovered so much previously lost and forgotten information and has served as an inspiration to several generations of Bay Area filmmakers and historians, including the author of this book, Bronco Billy and the SNA Film Company, all about the Western division of the Chicago-based SNA Film Manufacturing Company. Was it a coincidence that David Keene, the author of this and the historian of our museum, also went to San Francisco State? I don't know. New and more complete information has surfaced since Mr. Bell made the film back in 1974, so I want to clarify a few points. Obviously, there was an S involved with S and A, and uh, Mr. Anderson and Mr. Spoor, George Spoor, were the S and A of the S and A Film Manufacturing Company. Anderson made many films while in Niles. They were 10 minutes long, up to half an hour long. In fact, there were some that were several reels long, three and four reels, meaning they were more like 45 minutes or so. Those haven't surfaced, so we don't know what they are about, but we'd like to see that if we can. Regarding the film interiors shot inside the SNA barn, technically they were shot behind the barn because inside the building it would have been way too dark. The company built an open air stage for interior shots with diffused muslin sheets overhead to allow for sunlight, but cutting the glare. That did get torn down about six years after this film was made. So in about 1980, it came down. One of the doors was saved by the members of the Museum of Local History where it stood for decades. It was recently given to our museum where we will proudly display it so all can see. So the part about Peter B. Kind is a tricky one. I mean, after all, Bronco Billy himself is telling the story here, but uh, David Keene contends that it may actually have been the other way around. Peter B. Kind didn't start writing Westerns until 1913. And the timing sounds about right, except that Anderson actually shot a film in El Paso in 1910 called Bronco Billy's Redemption that had an eerily similar storyline as The Three Godfathers. Also, Anderson didn't start talking about this until he was in his 70s. It was 1958, he was getting an honorary Oscar, and Mr. Kine had just passed away a few months earlier, so maybe he was on his mind. Marguerite Clayton never married George M. Cohan, although she did star in a movie version of the play that he wrote called the Hit the Trail Holiday. It's considered lost at this time. So co-stars, but not married. Now, Marie Dressler, Slim Somerville, and Chester Conklin didn't make comedies for SNA, but instead Keystone in Los Angeles. So they all worked with Chaplin on Tilly's Punctured Romance or other films in 1914. It isn't that big of a stretch to think that they might have come up to visit their old co-worker uh, the next year, especially with the World's Fair happening in San Francisco, uh, not that long after they worked together. Perhaps there was a mix-up with Slim Somerville, as his name is very similar to a character played by Victor Potel in the Snakeville comedies called Slippery Slim. It's been found that Marie Dressler did in fact come and visit the Nile studio in 1913 due to her starring in a play at the Gaiety Theater in San Francisco. The reason? Gilbert Bronco Billy Anderson owned that theater. There was some film taken actually of her visit. However, the chances of us ever surfacing is very slim. And the same goes for footage that was shot when Al Jolson visited Niles in 1914. Now, my favorite line of the whole film is when Mr. Angus says, it all happened here 60 years ago, because now we can say it all happened here more than 100 years ago. Well, I'll close by taking you on a quick tour 
of our lovely 40-foot mural of some of the most prominent Niles SNA players. And it's located in my backyard. It was painted by artist Laura Ramey. So enjoy, and I'll see you at the movies.